if you want to know how to minimally invasively restore lower anterior incisal wear and achieve aesthetic long-lasting results, you're in the right place. Dr. Bud Mopper, a fellow of the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry, is going to show us exactly how to do that. And we're starting right now. And now, Amazon number one best-selling author, Dr. Tom, the Gems Guy, Orant. Greetings from Planet Gems. I'm Dr. Tom Orant, AKA the Gems Guy. If this is your first time here on the planet, welcome to the Dental Gold Mine. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. As part of our ongoing series, Gems of Dental Clinical Mastery, I have the honor of presenting my friend and mentor, Dr. Bud Mopper. He's a member of the Academy of Aesthetic Dentistry, a fellow of the AACD, and he teaches postdoctoral continuing education, direct resident bonding at many major universities. Dr. Mopper received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the World Aesthetic Congress in England. He's the Director of Education at the Center for Aesthetic Excellence in Chicago and is co-founder and chairman of Cosmodent. He's my friend and mentor. Buddy, thank you so much for being with us here today. Well, it's nice to be with you people again. Uh, you know, nobody believes in bonding more than I do. Buddy, I understand today we're going to be getting into what is really one of my favorite techniques that you taught me, which is uh, incisal wear, incisal reinforcement. So with that, I'm just going to let you take it away. It's such a great procedure and so easy to do and so beneficial for the patient is to reinforce the incisal edges of teeth that you don't have to lengthen or anything else, but they exhibit incisal wear. I mean, largely, it's because of, of bruxism. Uh, people are in, uh, largely in group function. So the thing you have to look at, when you look at the incisal wear, you want to know what's causing it. And usually if you've got incisal wear, if you look back at the canines, you'll see that there's a lack of a canine disclusion. So you, at the same time, you can't just fix the wear areas without looking at the occlusion. Because occlusion form follows function, you need to have the proper occlusion. And if you get that, many times you'll even stop the bruxing. If you can't stop the bruxing, then you need to... To, uh, at the, when you finish this, you must should advise your patients that may need a proximal appliance or something like that. Well, let's go through the procedure. Okay, if you take a look at this first slide, you can see I've got already got these the uh, four teeth uh, prepared, at the laterals and the centrals. I've got preps, and, and you look at the. I'll show you higher powers of the, the integrity of those enamel walls. It's so tremendous, it's unbelievable. All you're trying to do is preserve the incisal edge of that tooth and, and then stop the wear. If you take a look at the canine, you can see it over on the on the distal of, the, of that right canine, you can see there's wear in that area, and that's where you go, we're gonna do, add, add to that canine to get the disclusion so that you will stop the bruxism, hopefully, okay? So if you take a look how we've done this, you can see the before and after. Let's go through it step by step. If you take a look at, I, I'm going to penetrate the tooth surface, okay, with a microburr again. It's a flame shaped microburr and it's got a pointed end and that makes re a penetration easily. We do that with our copious amounts of water. I'm using it probably 40,000 RPMs and because I'm using like the can piece and uh, it, whatever it takes in order to do it and, and yet control the depth of the prep, which is usually a little over a millimeter at least, okay. And you're going to take, you're going to make room to repair the dental area that you want to repair, and then overlay it with with the enamel layer. Here's the micro burr. We're going to broaden the base of the micro burr. Here you can see it on the canine, and if I and on the canine, I'm going to have to treat that like a fracture and add the canine tip so that I can get disclusion. If I'm doing that, I crop the area, and I also will have to treat it like a fracture where I long bevel the facial and then go over the lingual and take a little piece of, a, of, of the lingual so I can wrap the lingual size wedge. If you don't wrap the lingual size wedge, you're going to have a tendency to lose it. So you want to wrap it for re resistance and retention form. So that's our basic, and believe me, preparation is important in every aspect of restorative dentistry. So once we got our preps, you can see I isolate. And I can isolate in quadrants because now i got metal strips in there between there, whatever you want to isolate with. That protects the uh, each proximal surface from the other proximal surface so that it won't stick. Now remember, you can't stick if you have a smooth surface. So you very seldom see me have leave a uh, anything, a matrix in there because you don't need it. You just don't need it. If you want to leave it in there, you can, but you don't need it. 
it won't stick if you've got that completely polished here. That's a polished surface, okay? So we go ahead and we prep the area. Now we're gonna acid etch the area. I'm a total etcher, so I use phosphoric acid. Leave it on the allotted time, wash it, dry it, put on our bonding adhesive. And that's the way it looks. Nice and clean and look at the integrity of those walls. Let's enlarge them and look at the integrity of that prep. Now that's, that's a deeper prep. I can't get the color right and blend the two surface if I don't use the same technique we've talked about before. And, and if you want to get that technique further, you can look at our courses online in, in, from Cosmodet. But it's so easy. What you're going to do is you're going to bring the undercolor up to the outer color. I can't do that with a microfill because it'll be too translucent. But I want microfill on the surface. Why? Because microfill is the enamel surface. It doesn't wear, it will not wear opposing two surfaces. It polishes and stays where you put in it and you can marginate it so beautifully you can't find it. It's the best restored. It is the Stradivarius, okay? The Stradivarius is here. They've been trying to reinvent the wheel, okay? They can't. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Microfill was the first one on the market some 30 years ago. Then came microhybrid, tried to be a universal. It failed, okay, completely as a universal. Then came nano, which is okay, but you can't get the same long-lasting finish that you can with a microfilm, okay? So here we go. In that, the depth of the area to bring up the undercolor is nanofill. It could be microhybrid, depending on the opacity that you want. Remember, the colors of the materials in our system are the same. Only the opacities are different. So we place the nano step by step, and you notice I'm making a concavity in the soft nano. And what do I make it? What do I going to do? What's happening there? I'm going to leave room to put the microfilm on. A, a person asked me yesterday when I was doing a seminar yesterday, why wouldn't you do all nano? Because I can't get the best of all worlds. I want the finish of the enamel surface. And the, the, it's going to give me the best margination. And it's going to last the longest. And they says, well, won't it break? I said, no, it won't break. First of all, can't. It's part of the whole thing. I place this and, and intersculpt that concavity. Now you see it's intersculpted. Plimerize that. Don't interfere with the oxygen hemorrhoid layer. So you're gonna, if you don't interfere with the oxygen hemorrhoid layer, that's one of the reasons I don't use mylar strips or anything else, okay? If you don't interfere with that, then you're getting one, you're getting both chemical and mechanical bonding from one material to another. So it becomes one material. It's just logic, think, okay? Now you sculpt the microfilm composite into that, that area, that void area that gives you the final surface. You sculpt it, you shape it, you get it where you want it. That's the way it looks. When you're finished, you do, then you do that, okay? And then you complete the quadrant. And now I'm ready to finish and polish. So we finish and polish. And before we do that, we check our occlusion. You can see the, the interferences. Some are on two surface, which I want, but you're also on, on composite. You know, the patient tells you they feel it, they feel it. So we'll finish it. And I'm going to use, I'm not using a rotary instrument, I'm using disc because that's a flat surface. Then we're going to go through the system, the course, to get the proper contour, to get rid of as much, much white line and get the margination you want. Once you've got it down the way you want it, then you go to the medium. Then you go to the fine. Then you go to the super fine with flex. If you want to use water, you can, but you don't need to. You don't have, you will not heat up the two surface. Then you go to rubber, and, and I use that just to blend it down towards a facial incisal and onto the lingual. You can use cups, points, whatever you want, but you use that underwater. Remember, rubber will heat up the tooth. So when you're, you're going to rubber, you use underwater, either a water drop or a water spray. Interproximally, I'll use a fine, super fine diamond strip to clear all the interproximals, followed by aluminum oxide finishing strip, which will finish it so beautifully. And then I'll check with Acufilm. There's a thinner paper, and you can see on that lower right, patient's lower right central incisor, there's a real interference. And believe me, when they say they can feel it, they can feel it. The other ones are all on two surfaces. I want that because that gives you the disclosure you're looking for. And even on the right, on the uh, right lateral, you can see a little bit of interference that we had to take off. Once we're done with that, that's the way it finished. You see, I added the canine tips to the to the canines. And that gives you the proper disclusion. And whether it's upper or lower, that's the way you should do it. It's so simple, so fast. 
They make everything too difficult. This is not difficult. And this is a routine this restorative dash we have this bed. It's clean. It's neat. Look how it preserves that tooth. What's the worst in the lower anterior crop? They're the worst. You let this go on, and you'll have that problem. This is a view from the incisal. This is just another case. In this case, I dropped it. But the, the length uh, posing that was a, a worst. So the nurse that I'd done it early on, and then he came in, and he had, I preserved these teeth. And, and I had to do a, long, a little bevel on the facial surface uh, of those teeth, maybe a little on the lingual of the right central. Other than that, there was a long bevel on the uh, facial of the left lateral. And other than that, the routine was the same. And when we get done, we end up with this. And what could be better than that? And that's the minimally invasive dentistry is its best. I'm not the best technician. I don't claim to be the best technician. There are so many great artists in this world but I think I'm the best teacher because I teach you the science of the materials and how they work. And let me tell you, I'm going to repeat it. The Stradivarius is here. Enamel microfilm is the king. And the, uh, you can't reinvent the wheel. You can't go backwards. And this is so great, it's unreal. And I know after all these years of experience. So with that in mind, that completes the uh, uh, incisal reinforcement. You can do this on the upper and lower. But remember, check the occlusion. And if you get, don't have this glue, you must get it. That's important, okay? And the other thing is, if they won't wear a night guard, that's not your fault. If they are Bruxers and they continue to Brux, I'm a Bruxer, I was a Bruxer. I had this done on my upper anterior teeth. Uh, if I get a chance someday, I'll show it to you. It's been on 14 years. My partner did 14 years ago. I've never Bruxed since, and I don't wear a night guard. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the in size of traffic and the size of reinforcement. The work is gorgeous, but you left out, and I'm so glad that you talked about the occlusion, because if we don't address the occlusion, if we simply go after the symptom and then we let them go back into where they were, we're not doing them a service, but you started out by saying that the occlusion was, was really important, and I like that. We, we left out the most important part, though, which is the patient reaction. Talk, if you would, about the, the joy and the, the reaction of your patients when they see this. Well, if, you know, I call it, when you, if you look at my opening, and I have a whole opening that I go through where I explain why resin bonding, okay? Why direct resin bonding? And part of that is I talk about instant gratification. They, they get to see it while they, you develop these things. They come in and they watch it proceed and they can't believe it. We show them in the mirror, things of that nature. And the patient is amazed. It's a, it's a practice builder. You'll get back. You, you do this kind of work, you've got referrals like you can't believe. And they are so, they're so happy when they walk out. Let me say something about gratification. Let me talk about facelifts for a minute, okay? In my mind, you see all these facelifts out there, and they never have the teeth done. The teeth should come before the face. That forms a structure by which they could drape the tissue so much better if there are problems. And what's more important than the smile? If you got a tight face and can't smile, I don't want it. And so, really, as far as I'm concerned, before the facelift should come the teeth. That's the way I feel about this whole thing. That's the way people feel about their smile. The smile is the important, most important thing the patient has. And if they can't let it go with an interview but for a job or something like that, believe me. Or they hide themselves because they're, or their smile because they, or they won't smile because of the way they they look. It's important. But when you do this kind of stuff. It changes their whole perspective on what they are. So that's the way I feel. 100% agree, and I, and I appreciate your sharing this, because again, it's one of those techniques, which as you said, it's not being taught, it's not being, it's not being done. And um, it is exactly what I would want for myself and for my family if I had that situation. It's so, it, because it preserves two structures, minimally invasive. And like I say, you got to charge for this. It's not something that just happens, but my God, would you want to cut those? You know, when we get into diastema closure, which we're going to do, you'll see. For me to close a simple diastema and a bunch of simple diastemas with porcelain is, in my mind, I'm going to tell you something right now, and I'm going to say it. It's malpractice. Okay, doesn't need to be done. When we get to the when we get to the diastema closure, you'll see that it's ridiculous. And I see all these cases that are doing it. The over the over manipulation of two structure. It bothers me, and it's not right. 
and we've got a material that if you know how to handle it, and it's a group of materials, it's not just microfill, it's the knowing how to use microfill in conjunction with nanofill, in conjunction with Michael Ibed, where each one fits into the bonding scenario, in the, and the use of opaqueers, and the use of little tints and what they do, and how they work with light, and what they do with, with translucence and things of that nature. They have, this is what should be taught basically in dental school. If it's not being taught, it should be taught to every single dentist in the world. This was amazing. Uh, buddy, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, my pleasure. Take care. Thanks a lot, Tom. If you found this video helpful, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification so you won't miss a thing. If you're not yet a GEMS family member, Elizabeth and I would be delighted to help you build your practice and your revenue. We'd love to have you with us here on Planet GEMS for a time-limited offer, a free test drive of GEMS family membership. Go to dentalgoldmine.com. There's a link in the description below. If this was helpful, click like. And thanks for joining me here in the Dental Goldmine. And remember, you're only one gem away.